We are from South Central Indiana REMC. We, uh, we travel around and give electrical safety demonstrations, some kind of do's and don'ts of electrical safety. My name is Joe Banfield. I've been with REMC going, this is my 20th year. Uh, prior to that, I was an electrical contractor for six years, same, same field. Ryan Ambergy, he's been with us five years. Uh, prior to that, he was also with a contractor for eight years. Steve Sims, he's been with us for a year now. And prior to that, he was with a, another utility for five years. What we're going to do today is I'm going to, we'll go over a little demo and everything we're, uh, to show you how this all works and then we're going to go through it and show you the stuff live. Just give you a little background real quick on how we get to where we're at to be journeyman linemen. We go through uh, 8,000 hour, 8, hours of training, uh, go to a couple climbing schools, and then our hot gloving school, which you see the guys are wearing right now. I can pass around some of these and let you see them. I don't drop them all. So these are what we wear, uh, some of our PPE. After we go through our uh, hot gloving schools, we go through another uh, last uh, test out. We test the um, last phase, and then you get your, your top out and you become a journeyman. Some of the stuff you'll see us wearing today is all of our PPE is our rubber boots, all of our clothes is FR. Uh, hard hat, safety glasses, rubber gloves, and sleeves. You see the guys wearing. That's some of the, that's some of our daily stuff that we wear. Um, to get, we're going to give you a, a little overview of our whole uh, system here. So, how you guys get power? We start out at a generating plant. Let's just say we start there. At, we'll go with 69,000 volts. It comes out of that generating plant, makes its way to a substation somewhere in your area. When it gets to that substation, that bit, there's a big transformer inside that substation and it does just what it says it's going to do. It's going to transform that voltage from 69,000 volts to 7,200 volts. It's going to leave that substation, go out to your house where there's going to be another transformer. Transformer looking similar to that gray one there, Ryan's point too. It's going to come into the top side of that now at 7,200 volts. That transformer is going to now transform that voltage from 7,200 volts down to 12240. And then that's what's in your house, okay? So that's the gist of how we get to you. So for us, you can kind of hear the generator in the background. That is our generating plant for, for better terms right now. So we, we're coming out of that generator to this transformer. So that transformer will do one of two things for you, okay? So it comes in 7,200 volts and then comes out 12240. But if you put 12240 back through it, it's going to give you your 7,200 volts out the top. So that's actually what we're doing today. We're back feeding it. So what ha could happen is, say a storm happens, consumer hooks up his generator backwards or wrong, it could actually energize onto us. So we put grounds on, which the guys just took off so we can get our show started. We, we put grounds on each side of us to protect us. So if you would happen, consumer would happen to hook it up wrong, it's going to protect us, all right? It's probably going to burn up their generator, to be honest. So let's get to the demo here. We're going to come in with the 12240, where Ryan's showing you there, and we'll be coming out to the top here soon to our top wire, which is our primary wire, which is 7,200 volts. The bottom wire is our neutral wire, kind of like a return path. It's got to get back, so think of it as running in a circle. It's got to come back, so it's a return path. So that transformer is marked a sub for us, so that's kind of our substation, like I told you earlier. We're coming to pole number two here. I'll kind of move over a little bit. That device on the front is called a cutout. Now, that's going to be on most of your transformers and some of the, what I call our tap lines off our three phase. Those, uh, those are a one shot device. So once those operate and they drop down, we have to come out, figure out the problem, 
once we figure out that problem, then we'll refuse that. All right, so that's a one-shot device. The device on the back of pole two is an air reclosure. It's very similar to that, but it's going to operate four times now. So, say a tree falls on the power line. That, that device back there, that air reclosure, is going to operate four times. So it's going to click, open up. Click, open up. It's going to do it four times. On the last time, last burn, it's going to give it a long curve. It's going to hold it one last hurrah, maybe to try to burn that tree down. Let's say it did burn that tree down. We're good. All, all you would have been seeing at your house is lights blinking for those four times, and then all of a sudden they stayed on. So that means it burnt the tree down, okay? Now on the reverse side, that last hurrah, it couldn't burn it down. So it, what it did is lock it out. So now what we have to do is come out, we go to that breaker, we confirm that that breaker is opened up, once we leave, then we leave that breaker, and now we have to, continue, we have to run that out. Um, so we'll be going pole to pole. Um, and then once we clear that, everybody's in the clear, then we call our dispatch and we energize and that gets you your power. Pole three, where Steve's standing here, just another cut out, cut out device. Over on pole four, so let's just now, we came from the substation, worked our way down the power line and we will arrive at your house. You have a meter base, we have a security light there that will come on here in just a few to show you that uh, we got power there and we have a transformer at your house. And then our friendly little owl guy there that's going to have an incident here in a few minutes. Um, I always forget to tell this part so I'm going to say it. We have a Raptor program at RMC. And what I mean by that is, is if we arrive at a job and we have an endangered bird, a blue herring, a red tail hawk, or something like that that has gotten into our power lines and burn itself, then what we do is we go, we have to call DNR. DNR will come out, take pictures, they dispose of it, we fill out the paperwork, then we go out and we put animal guard that the guys are pointing to on the hose on the, there, and we, each, we actually have one that goes around that cutout, that one shot device I told you about. So we do everything we can do to prevent that from happening again. It's not 100% guarantee, but we try to prevent it. I'm going to show you a couple sizes of our wire real quick and then we'll start our demo. All right. So who of you live in subdivisions that's got the green transformer boxes? All right. So this is the wire that feeds your house. So you remember I told you you had 12240 in your house. So the two black wires you see each carry 120. Your black and, black and yellow is your neutral, your return path. Okay? So 12240 on each one of those. This is just a bigger version. This is 350. Just a little bit bigger version. Now, this is the main wire that feeds that transformer for your house. The center part you see there carries the 7,200 volts. Yeah, this, is, this here is a direct berry wire, okay? This is going direct in the ground, being buried, all right? So, so if you live with the areas that have like those gray transformers on your pole, this is going to be like a wire you'll see feeding it, that overhead wire that bears the 7,200 volts. It'll be one of these sizes or a little smaller, like you see on the display. And this is what goes from pole to your house. So the two black, is 120, gives you your 240, and then this, the neutral is your silver, okay? So a lot of our, uh, a lot of our outages in our area, because we're very rural, is animal and or tree uh, related. So what we'll do is I'll get out of your way so we can start. Um, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and put a fault on it. We're going to let our little friendly owl, he's going to get into the power line and we'll show you what happens. <laughs> you guys can be honest, who jumped? Oh, really? Nobody jumped? Okay, thank you for being honest, thank you. Um, so, now that that one shot happened, all right, so now what, what would happen is now we would come out, we'd either have our little friendly owl laying at the bottom, or squirrel, or raccoon, or whatever, 
we know that that's probably nine times out of ten the cause, so we'll refuse the transformer, okay? No more loud booms, just so you know. Um, so what, we'll, what we do now is we're going to put a very similar fault on that same air reclosure now, all right? So you'll hear it, it's going to click, it'll open up, click and open up, and then it'll be on that, after that last third one, it's going to give it a long burn curve. So it's, it's going to like, man, I'm going to try to burn it off one last time. And, we'll, and you'll see, you'll hear it here. Clear. So right now, that's, that's sensing a fault on the line right now. There's three, so now you'll see it's a lot longer. Right now it's still burning, and then now it just opened up. So right, right at this point, um, that line is opened up. We would now have to come out and we would run pole to pole. We gotta go to pole to pole to see if we can find the fault, what happened, tree fell, lightning, what it might, whatever it might be. Then we would refuse that or reset that breaker. That breaker is a handle, so it's, it's just being reset. Just kind of similar to the same fashion that your breaker in your house is reset, okay? Very similar to that. How many have ever been to a party that's had mylar balloons? Nobody goes out? Oh, okay, there we go. So what happens is, is the, the kids that have them think it's neat to let them go. What do you think happens eventually? What is that? They right, yeah, eventually they come down. A lot of people think they pop, no. What happens is they eventually come down. My, mylar is very conductive, all right? And you'll see here with the demo in a minute. So you can imagine, well, I'll tell you this part afterwards. So we'll watch what Ryan's gonna do here with our smiley face. He's gonna put it in that cutout we talked about. You'll see that it's conductive because we're gonna actually light up our light at the end. So, and if you watch the balloon closely, you should be able to see the electricity. He'll start running in a circle around it. All right, you'll see the sparks. So can you see it there? So you can see we're making, it's very conductive. Our lights lit up the house and our balloons conducting electricity. So you can imagine that substation I told you about. Let's say little Johnny lets a balloon go. It does its travel and lands in that one of them substations on that $500,000 transformer. And lands in there and just continues to arc. So your $2 balloon just cost us 500000 We tell you to pop them when you get done with them. Don't let them go, okay? We appreciate that. Nobody lie on this one. Who's, not, who's ever eaten a hot dog? Come on. You can participate. You don't, it's, you're not getting drafted, nothing. You can, it's something you can, be, you can participate in this. So Ryan has a hot dog hand. We use hot dogs because it's very, very similar to the human hand. It's got the fat, the meat, the gristle, all the stuff you like to eat, the skin and the meat. And so we don't have a glove that fits that. So we use that orange. Uh, rubber piece you see there, which we have two similar. This is what we use to protect ourselves up on the line. This is for incidental contacts. So if we would happen to brush it, we put these on the line. Also with the gear you see with the guys wearing. So what he's going to do is he's going to touch that hand against that. You'll see that nothing's going to happen. And then you're going to see what happens if he makes contact without the rubber goods. So you guys are probably pretty hungry, I'm assuming. I'm just going on a limb. So, speaking of limbs, so you can imagine, you can see, your fingertips would probably be gone. Electricity works kind of like a microwave. It's gonna start cooking from the inside out. These are very hot to the touch, all right? The other part of our outages are tree-related. Um, 
we, we work in a very rural area. Um, so we're going to show you what happens when the tree gets against the power line. Um, and I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit more about it afterwards. But it's not going to be as dramatic as the hot dog you just saw, the big splatter type deal. You'll see it start to smoke. It'll start to burn. And if it stays there long enough, because we're, we're, not, we're actually bypassing our breaker right now, so it'll, it'll actually burn it up if we let it. So as you can see, it's starting to smoke. Not near as dramatic as the, um, there goes a little bit. All right, so um, we've had this numerous times. Consumer becomes a tree trimmer on the weekend, cuts this tree, didn't realize the wind might be blowing or whatever and it knocks on the power line. We arrive to find the consumer cutting the tree off still. As you can see, it will track. That will track, all right? So what I'm saying is, is if you have a tree that lands on the power line, please don't attempt to continue to cut the wood. Um, electricity, don't care who you are, it will kill you, all right? So please don't, uh, don't, con don't continue to cut it. Um, the other part of our uh, outages is the owl, which I know you saw a little bit of him a second ago when he had the big loud bang. This part here we'll try to do, and what I see try is the wind's blowing. So what we usually try to do is draw a big arc. It'll draw an arc just from him making contact. So we'll try to do it, but that, that air kind of, the wind makes it dissipate a lot, so it don't actually let it do it. Or it might let it do it. I mean. So you can kind of get the gist of 7200 volts. Again, I'm just going to say, please, I, I, we, we want to make sure that don't ever cut a tree if it's against the power line. What the guys are setting up right now is a what we call our PVC man. This is kind of new to our demo. And what we do with this is we're going to put a grapefruit in the center there. And we're going to show, the demo is for, to show you how it cooks from the inside out. So we'll do it. I'll cut that in half. And I'll show you that it's going to be burnt in the middle. That's our plan if it works. Sometimes it's new. So if it, if it works, it'll be burnt in the center. And the outside will still be cold, OK? So it'll show you. It's kind of like a demo to show you how it cooks from the inside out. Quick question. And this is a little bit of audience participation. I know you guys are rambling and wanting to do it real much. But why, is it, why can a bird land on a power line and live? Not touching the ground. Good job. So that they could take a human and set him dead center of that power line. As long as he's not touching anything grounded, he's good to go. OK? So a power line laying on the ground, is it dead? No, it is not dead, correct. We've had people think it's insulated. No. All right. That wire is laying up there bare just like I showed you that wire. Just like you see the up there on those wires. Those are bare. Okay. So do not ever touch a power line if it's down on the ground. So if you'll kind of focus a little bit on the grapefruit there, you'll see it kind of light up a little bit and burn and smoke and all that good stuff. Okay, so you can kind of see the path. Who wants to volunteer? Want to touch it? Anybody? Come on, just touch it. I ain't going to kill you. Can you feel the center? Can you feel this? Yeah. So the center's very hot to the touch. If you guys back there can see it. Um, so it's tracked straight down the center here, okay? Let me get rid of this. It's kind of sticky. Okay, this next thing can involve every one of you. So I'm pretty sure you drove here, all right? Uh, what we're going to talk about a little bit is, let's just simulate that you're driving home. You accidentally 
go off the road, hit a power pole. Then power lines fall on top of the car while you're sitting inside. What do we do? Show of hands, who's getting out and running? Good. Who's staying in? Good job. So yes, the key is to stay in. Kind of like that balloon, where electricity is going to run around outside that car. All right. Now, worst case scenario, car catches on fire, starts to catch on fire. You got to get out now. Power lines are still on the car. All right. I'll use this crack here. So we simulate this as your side of your car. I'm going to open my door. All right. I'm going to stand on the car. All right. On the edge of the car. All right. We're going to bunny hop. And we're going to bunny hop until you cannot bunny hop no more to get away, okay? And the reason for that, all right, first of all, now I'm back in the car. I step out. That is what you call touch potential. Now I'm touching the ground and the car at the same time that it's energized, all right? Now you get out here away from the car and you decide I'm five foot away, that I'm good. We have what we call step potential, okay? Step potential is just very similar to you throwing a rock in the water and the ripples you see when you get that. So let's start at the car, 7,200 volts. It's going to dissipate every 10 foot 100 volts. Everybody always goes, well, so if I get, they're trying to do the math. That's why I just say bunny hop until you cannot bunny hop no more. All right? Because there's all kinds of variables. If there's still conduit in the ground and you don't know when it's run, I mean, just, will you look silly? Probably. Look at that guy bunny hopping. What the heck's he doing? But you know what? I mean, you'll be alive. So let's do this. And here, I'll show you step potential. See, I just got out. Now I got 7,200 volts on this leg. And I just stepped. And I say I got 6,600 volts on this leg. That is going up and down you. All right? And unfortunately, that's probably where you'll be laying. All right? Now, let's add to this a little bit. You're in the car. You're able to stay there. It's not on fire, so you stay inside like you're supposed to. Now the EMTs and police departments show up. All right? Can they, can they walk into that step potential, you think? Yes, they can. OK? So they can walk into that. And what's going to happen is once they're getting closer and they're stepping like this, they're going to feel their, it's going to start tingling. They're going to get that tingly feeling. And as you get closer, it's going to get higher. OK? And eventually, they could step right into what that same step potential that, you're, that you had right by the car. OK? All right. I'm going to say this real quick and get this out of the way. I, we truly appreciate you guys letting us come. We're, uh, we're done here at the end. I'm going to show you the guys that are going to, we got some of the uh, tools that we use. We'll, we'll show you here in just a second. But our biggest advertiser is you guys, word of mouth. We don't go out there and promote this every day. It's on our website. But uh, we went from doing uh, three shows that were up to 30 already, and we don't even have the rest of your scheduled yet. So I mean, it's getting more and more out there. And we appreciate it because we figure we save one life. It's, it's worth it, all right? We do this free of charge, all right? If you have 25 or more people, we come out to your location. And we set up for you, and we do this exact same show. Um, that's why, I mean, we, we do it for the safety of the community. So I'm going to, at this time, when I take questions, oh, real quick, let me go to this. What Ryan is holding is what we call a long stick. So you can imagine it gets windy like this. We take that fuse on that cutout door I told you about. We put that on that stick, and we send it up 50-some foot in the air, and we try to hit a little slot to put that door in. It takes just a little bit of practice. And usually when we're doing that, it's raining, windy, snowing, all that good stuff, all right? What Steve is holding is a shotgun, not for hunting. This is what we use for those hotline clamps Steve will show you. That's what we use to tighten up. For you that live in those subdivisions, got the green pad mount transformers, we use that in there on what we call elbows so we can open, we can pull open an elbow, pull it off. That's just some of our tools. I'm open to questions. Have you got any? Anybody? In southern Indiana, how many transformers are uh, the Widowmaker style do you deal with? Widowmaker style is you mean the bean flipper? The, the one with the square at the end where if the cutoff falls out it's still live on the, the tail end when you get shot. Well those are we call those bean flippers. Yeah. Um, those are 
for those of you who don't know what they are, it's just a little link fuse. Is all it's in a, and that, that wire, like he said, is energized coming all the way down. And we actually are changing every one of those out. So those, I mean, don't get me wrong, they're still out there. We still have some on our system. Um, but yeah, those are something that they're trying to, I mean, obviously get rid of because those are some of our outages, which would be an animal. All he's got to do is on that arrestor, on that transformer. We don't have one on here, unfortunately, but you can see on the little side of that little transformer, there's bolt holes there. That's where the arrestor would go. Um, and then what it is is there's a gap on that, so that's shooting that across there, and if something gets in between there, that's what knocks out the power line. So instead of just taking out that transformer, it takes out the whole line because it's going, it's, it's, it's a direct line right there. So good question though. Well, thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Hope you guys liked it. Thanks.